Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Daniel from Jack Studios and I thought I'd just create this little video uh, testing out the Canon R5 with the Atomos Shogun Inferno. And I watched a video a couple days ago from a YouTuber called No Life that he uh, found a little hack about the camera that if you shoot 4K HQ externally to either a Ninja 5 or a Shogun or something that can take the feed and you shoot without SD cards or CF Express cards in the actual camera, you can shoot for up to about four hours without the camera overheating. And I thought I'd just do a quick little test to see if this is the case because, you know, they're real. Um, we went and shot uh, a 4K 120 slow motion kitchen scene just the other day and it literally ended with us putting the camera in the freezer twice through the shoot. Uh, I think we're shooting for about three, four hours in total. And you know, the final product of the video was a minute and we kept having to turn the camera on and off throughout the takes. The thing that people don't talk about nearly as much as the overheating is the recovery time and the fact that just leaving the camera on with the camera monitoring um, 4K 120 or 8K or whatever it is, this is actually lowering your record time and you'll start to see the overheating warnings even if you're not recording at all. From what I've seen, the numbers with the R5 are conservative. When you touch the camera, it's not hot. It's, it's barely warm. When you take out the CF Express card, when it's overheated the camera, it's not, um, it's, it's just lightly hot to the touch. Now, I got the camera last week Monday, so I've had the camera a week now, and to be honest with you, I've paused a lot of my shooting and just focused on this camera. I took this, this camera with me uh, on a shoot, a behind the scenes shoot. Um, we did a kitchen scene, which was in slow motion. I've done about three days worth of testing into the Shogun to deliver these results because I wanted to know if I can professionally use this camera as a tool. And that's really what cameras are. When you think about them properly, they're tools. It's, it's really just a tool that you can use for your filmmaking. And so when I looked at whether or not I should get the S3 or the R5, it really came to, down to the fact that it was a hybrid camera. You know, one camera that could do it all. And when I look at what my clients need from my videos, they don't need 8K. They don't even need 4K HQ. 4K HQ is for me. <laughs> um, it's because I like to see the detail and the clarity in the image. And when you look at what the client needs, most of your clients, most of my clients, they don't see a difference between 4K HQ and 8-bit 4K. Um, or 4K all I, which is actually 10 bits still on this camera. I've run examples between the 4K 8-bit that I'm getting out of the A7R Mark II and the 4K just normal that doesn't overheat in this camera and they're practically identical. Um, with that being said and that huge rant right there, uh, I want to give you some of the real world tests that I've done over the last three days because it has been tireless. Um, I've been running this camera pretty much non-stop from what I saw. The first test that I did, uh, I was getting an hour and a half and then the camera overheated. That was a particularly hot day and the camera was upstairs. I reckon it was probably 30 degrees Celsius. I recorded 4K HQ into the external recorder for an hour and a half. The camera overheated, I turned it off for five minutes, turned it back on and then I switched to B-roll. I switched to 100 frames per second, um, which would be the same as the results if I was shooting 120 frames just in Australia here, so we shoot PAL. So I shot 100 frames per second for a total of a minute. The card said that I could shoot for three minutes. After one minute, the overheating warning came on. So I stopped recording after a minute and I turned the camera off and left it for another five minutes. And then I turned the camera back on, which five minutes rest time is the right amount of rest time. Anything longer than that, the client's you know, thinking, oh, this guy's unprofessional, all that kind of stuff. So I turned it off for five minutes, turned it back on, and then I was able to shoot uh, 4K HQ into the external recorder again for like 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, it was on and off. Yesterday, I tested the external recording again. I had had the camera off for about 12 hours, so the camera was completely cold. Um, 
brand new battery, no cards. I deleted all the media because let's face it, nobody really wants to watch all this. You just want to know what it's actually like. Um, and I recorded um, 4K HQ into the Shogun for two hours. The camera battery died first, and then I changed to the second battery that I had, recorded for another hour. That battery died. Then I grabbed the third battery, put that in the camera, and I recorded for another hour. So in total, I recorded for four hours without more than like two minutes of a break between all of it. And then the one terabyte SSD in the actual external recorder filled up. So let's be honest, the average, the average person, the average filmmaker, is not going to record one terabyte worth of 4K HQ footage straight away one after another. It's really important that we're able to record for longer than an hour. Um, but for me personally, um, that's all I need. I, I need the camera to record longer than an hour and then if I switch into other modes for them not to overheat. And I think that with this Ninja 5 or the Shogun or any external recorder with no CF Express cards in the camera or no SD cards in the camera, you can do that. Um, and so, yeah, huge thank you to uh, No Life. Thank you so much. You've changed this camera for me. It's changed it from being a tool that I would use on specific shoots to being a tool that I can rely on for 90% of my shoots. So, really appreciate it. Just thought I'd create this quick little video to verify that. I've tried the no life method of taking out the SD cards and the CF Express cards and it works. And Canon, please release a firmware update, fix this issue. I know you're being oversensitive about the overheating thing. Sony cameras, when they get close to overheating, they are hot to touch. The batteries are hot. The SD cards are hot. This camera, I, like, I've overheated it maybe 10 times now, 15 times, and it's not even hot to the touch, it's just warm. So I feel like they're being a little bit oversensitive. It's, it's a little bit Canon safety feature here. Um, and I'd like to see that removed. I'd like the option to be able to remove that. So yeah, if you guys like this video, like and subscribe down below. See you later.